Just take a moment and center in to that true teacher is the Christ within God's presence. So we take a moment. Thank you, God. We know you're the true teacher. And so we tune in and hear you speak to us from inside. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to this uh, third Sunday of January. And in January, we're celebrating abundance. And so we align ourselves in uh, when we begin in unity, we know that our thoughts matter because our thoughts are what helps us to bring forth, they're the conduit through which we bring forth spirit in us. So we use affirmations, not to make them true, but why? Because they are true. Right, okay. So we're aligning ourselves with uh, these uh, statements, and I invite you to engage your energy system. You can use hand motions, you can wave your hands around, whatever you want to do, but get yourself engaged and let, let this uh, speak to you, let it open up those channels of abundance for you. So this is from uh, Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman, who is featured in that uh, booklet that you got today. She is just, she passed on from Earth Experience a few years ago. She was wonderful, wonderful leader, did a lot of good in this world and still does through all of her legacy and her energy. So let's align with this wonderful, uh, affirmation from Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. Here we go. I expect every day to bring me a new blessing. I expect an abundance of every good thing every day. Take a breath and let's align with it the second time. Here we go. I expect every day to bring me a new blessing. I expect an abundance of every good thing every day. Take a breath. Let yourself feel that and let's align with it the third time. Here we go. I expect every day to bring me a new blessing. I expect an abundance of every good thing every day. All right. Are you feeling that in your life? Yes. Good. All right. It works because it opens us up to spirit. That's really the whole point. All right. You know George Carlin, right? The comedian? All right. He's, he was a funny guy, and he always had his twisted but hmm, very wise perspective on life. So uh, George Carlin once said, he said, I put in a dollar in the change machine, but nothing changed. We know why, right? Because we, when things change, we want things to change a lot of times, right? We sit around and we want things to change. And yet we know um, as we are tuning into our spiritual lives that things may change, they may not change, and it may make us feel a little better for a while. But ultimately, if anything's going to really be different, you know what's got to change, right? Come on, this isn't hard. You know this, right? We got we to gotta change, right? And so what is it that has to change? I mean, you may think, well, okay, I'll change my hairstyle, I'll change my job, I'll change where I live, I'll change my friends, I'll change my diet, whatever, you know, I'll change my exercise routine. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It can be useful, it can be helpful, and, and as we all know, there's plenty of advice <laughs> for how to do that everywhere, you know, plenty, some of it free, some of it will cost you, okay? But there's plenty of advice and ultimately, though, that's not really the kind of changes that are going to make a permanent difference for us. And I'm not saying they're bad. I mean, they can open up avenues and so forth but, and for good. And in the end, what's really going to make a difference is really not even a change. It's a transformation. And it's the transformation of our understanding of our identity. Imelda Shanklin, I love that name, Imelda Shanklin, who was a, a wonderful early unity writer, has this great little book called What Are You? And in that book, she challenges us, and she says, you may think that you're a mother or a son or a daughter or a brother or a husband or a work at this job or whatever. She said, those are your roles in life. That's not what you are. What you are is an expression of God. You are a daughter or a son of God, and that within you is all the power, all the love, all the abundance, all the goodness of life itself. 
And she was really clear, God's not some big person sitting up in the sky somewhere. God is life itself. And every person, all of creation, is an individualization of that power. And so that as we grow in understanding of who we are and what we are, then that's the transformation that kicks us off into a whole new way of living. And you say, well, I know that. I know I'm a child of God. I got that. And you probably do, or, I, or you, would, you wouldn't be sitting here on Sunday morning. I believe you. And, speaking for myself and for everybody I've ever met, there's always the opportunity to deepen and increase that awareness, that understanding. And that's the opportunity in life, is to expand that, tr- that realization of that truth in us. And it has many components. It might be intellectually, yes, I understand that more fully. It may be emotionally, yes, I understand that more fully. And that's all important. It may be in uh, my very soul, I understand that more fully. And ultimately, where uh, the rubber meets the road is how is it making a difference in my daily life? How is it making a difference in what I experience every day? Do I experience that I'm always in the arms of the angels? Do I experience that? Well, if you're human, I'm making a guess here that you probably don't feel that way all the time. Am I right? Okay. Okay. I don't. Okay. I don't think anybody does. That's okay. That's part of the human experience is that we forget. You know, there's that, that story about the little boy that uh, has a new baby brother, and he's, his parents are getting a little concerned because they know he goes in there every day and sort of takes a little quiet time in talking to the baby. You know, and they're like, what's he doing in there? So one day they eavesdrop, and you know this when he's, he's, they hear him, and what he's saying is he's saying, tell me, he says, I'm, tell me where I'm from because you've just been there and I've forgotten. I've forgotten. I've forgotten where we're really from. And so that's the opportunity is to know that more fully and to let that be more and more real for us in our lives so that when we do meet those inevitable challenges in life, because that's part of what goes on in our human experience, that's okay. When I meet them, though, can I then remember to turn my mind just even a little bit and I go, yeah, okay, yes, I am an expression of God. The power of God, the love of God, the abundance of God is in me. And that way we can say, you know, maybe there have been times that I've been down and out, but I've never been broke, right? I've never been broke because I can always remember that within me there is that infinite power and I can call on it. I can call on it in any time, in any way, and it can become more and more real for me, more and more actual for me, more and more activated for me, so that I certainly may have moments of despair, I may have moments of challenge, that's okay, and I more and more quickly remember to turn my mind, and I become more and more, so much more fully aware of who I am and what I am, that that the despair isn't so deep and the upset isn't so large, because I am fully more, much more fully grounded in that realization of who I actually am. So how do we cultivate that deepening? It's really not hard. I mean, there are a million ways to do it. There are three simple ways. One is by gratitude. Just look around you every day and think of, and think and make a list or make a gratitude jar or just note it in your own mind. What are you grateful for? What do you see that's, that opens that gratitude, opens that realization of the power of God in our lives and in our world? A second way is certainly prayer, taking a daily time of prayer. There's no one right way to pray, but simply allowing yourself to be conscious of the goodness of life, read something inspiring, come and commune with other people who are on an inspiring path. This is Certainly one great place to do that, and there are many places probably in your life where you can go to be around inspiring people that are on that spiritual path. Do it, you know? And the third way is to love. No matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, no matter how wacko it looks, make a choice that today I'm going to love. You know, that's one of the great legacies that uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. left us. He said, hate is too great a burden to bear, so I choose love. I think I'll just love. And that's the truth, because love is about being in the flow. Love is about allowing the flow of life. 
Lo love is about letting uh, the, our oneness with God become real in what we do and what we say and how we see things, and it's about letting those connections with other people be, uh, be real. Um, do you ever feel like, uh, no, thank you, I'm not going to love today? <laughs> oh, I'm, glad to, I'm always glad to know I'm not the only one. It always helps me. All right. There's some stuff that's like, no, that's just too far. That's too far. No, not that one. The rest of it, no, not that one. Okay. But you know what happens when we do that is that we get stuck with our despair, right? That's the choice. Do I want to be willing to go, okay, all right, let the love flow. Doesn't mean you have to like it or like anybody. It means, but you mean you have to love it, love. Just let the love flow, forgive, which we'll talk about in a minute, or you can, or you can stay stuck in your despair, which do you want? You know, sometimes I'm like, I, I like my despair. I'm going to just stay there. Yeah, yeah. And then you get tired of it, right? You get tired of it. So, so then we get to forgive. We get, we get to love. I want to. So let's talk a little bit about forgiveness because forgiveness is really um, the way to keep yourself grounded in abundance, to ground it in wealth. You know, we sang that beautiful song at the beginning today about I am wealthy. What wealth, you know, we think of that as money. Okay, money's fine. It's a good thing. You need it in earth plane. And what wealth, the deeper meaning of wealth is well-being. That's what it's about. Wealth is well-being. It's the well-being all around. It's the wholeness. And that includes having enough, you know, uh, to, of what you need in the material realm to do what you need to do. So um, let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about how forgiveness is really what keeps that wealth, that well-being flowing and all that abundance flowing that we've been uh, singing about today and that we're honoring here on this, um, on this Sunday in, in January as we're th think, thinking about abundance. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a different perspective on forgiveness. And there's no one right way to see it. It can mean a lot of things. But at the foundation of it, it has to do with staying in the flow. So this is from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and it's uh, chapter 6 and verse, starting with four, verse 14. And this is following uh, the Lord's Prayer. So here you go. It says, so if you, for, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Well, that sounds kind of like, well, pfft. sounds like my parents, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other discussion. We're not going there. Okay. Anyway, so what this is about is not that God's like, well, you be nice and they'll be nice. That's not what this is, friends. It's much, much deeper than that. It's about God can't forgive us if we don't forgive others. Why? Because we're doing this, right? We're like, no. I don't think so. So what's happened is we have said, I am now going to pinch the hose. You ever been out in your garden and you're trying to water and you're wondering, why is not the water coming out, you know? And you look and the hose is all twisted up because all pinched. That's what we're deciding to do. If we don't forgive, and forget, let me say this too, forgiveness has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with pardoning anybody or anything. Nothing to do with that whatsoever. It has nothing to do with it. That's a big barrier a lot of times. That's, that's something else. Forgiveness simply is saying, I am willing to let go of how it is that I'm in despair. I'm willing to let go of how it is that I'm hurting. I'm willing to let go of how it is that I'm keeping myself in the pres prison of negativity and upset and one down and being you know, freaked out by what somebody else is doing. Forgiveness is simply saying, I'm willing to let it go. I don't know who did what to who or whatever. It's none of my business or what they did to me. And yes, we have to feel the feelings. We have to honor it. I'm not saying there's not like cheap forgiveness. And it's about letting it go. It's about saying, I am willing to entertain the concept that the power and the grace and the love of God is bigger than anything that has harmed me or anybody else. I'm willing to entertain that possibility and let God do the healing work. And part of my responsibility is, okay, yeah, I need to feel and to know that the power and the presence of God was there with me and whoever else it was when whatever it was happened. 
and I am willing to let the grace of God help me out here, and I'm willing to not make that person, place, or thing my higher power. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you ever make mean people your higher power? <laughs> Why? Because we do that on earth plane, right? We think so-and-so is bigger than all of this, and so they, we, don't, we don't think I'm making them my higher power, but guess what? Yes, we are. Because we're letting them dom- we're letting meanness or whatever it is dominate us. And we're saying that's bigger than anything else. How do I know this? Oh my, I wonder how. Anyway. Give it up. It does not work. Know that the power and the grace of God is greater than any any human thing, whatever it is, any person. Don't let them run your life. You don't need that to be your higher power. Who needs it? Doesn't work, right? Let God be your higher power. Let God be that which is your source. Let God's grace and love flow through you and bring the healing and bring the goodness and bring the peace and the abundance in your life. That's what it means to keep the flow open. So that's what it is. If I am willing to let go of what it is that has experienced on earth plane that has hurt me, if I'm willing to dip down into that spiritual understanding of who I am as a child of God, if I'm willing to let that flow and let the grace of God flow and let that person, let them out of prison, let me out of prison, then guess what? I'm opening the flow of God's love into my life. I'm opening the flow of abundance and I'm free. I'm not dragging anybody around. Don't you ever get tired of dragging people around? I do. Boy, let it go. We don't have to. That's the whole message of Christianity. It really is. It's, It's about transformation. It's about being willing to give love in return for error, that we can afford to do that because we're one with God. That's Jesus' whole message. That's the whole message that he was going around telling everybody all the time is, hey, you're one with God. You don't need to feel bad about yourself. You don't need to let everything weigh you down. That's not what's going on. Get it about who you are. And he demonstrated that. He forgave people at the very end after they'd been horrible to him, right? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And that's the message that helps us. And he could afford to do that because he knew who he was. And that's what he was telling all of us is, hey, you're one with God. Live that way. Live from that place, and you too will be free. You too will have uh, life uh, abundant. You too will live in the power and the grace and the goodness of life when when you know that and you don't let outer things get you down because that's not where it's at. It's all about being within you. So whatever it is in your life that you feel like has weighed you down, whatever it is in your life that you feel like is holding you back, Entertain the possibility of giving love. And that's what love really, forgiveness really is. It's love in return for error. That's the great metaphysical meaning. And our good old unity founders and early writers talked about that all the time. Forgiveness is giving love in return for error, whatever it seems to be. Um, There's a really neat story about Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb and the phonograph and who knows what else. You know, he was quite the inventor. There's a story about him that one day... um, he, uh, he, you know, he had a workshop, I guess, out on his grounds of his house, and that's where he did all of his experimentation and all of his, you know, putting things together and all of his inventing and so forth. So one day, for some reason, that workshop caught on fire, and um, he he didn't have, you know, his insurance was what, like 10 cents on the dollar or something, so it wasn't really going to help him a lot to rebuild it. But he called his young son over to him to, as they were, he was standing outside watching it burn, and he says, son, he said, this is great. He says, all my mistakes are going up in flames. <laughs> and then he says to his son, he says, son, go call your mother. She's never going to see a fire like this again. <laughs> That's forgiveness, right? That's forgiveness is that I am willing to see whatever happens to me as the open door to a new opportunity. Loss is simply a change of form. He didn't lose his ability to create. He didn't lose his innate spiritual God nature, however he saw that. He didn't lose um, his sense of self. He just lost some mistakes. He just lost some stuff, right? Anything that we lose is simply a shift in form. 
And I know that's easier said than done. Surely, at the level of humanity, we grieve when we lose a person in our lives, one way or the other, through death or through a change in relationship or when we lose a home or a job or whatever. Yes, at that one level, yes, we grieve, and we need to do that. We need to pay attention to that human aspect and to open up ourselves to know, oh, I've never lost anything. My good is still here. The love is still here. The opportunities are still here. Myself is still here. My God nature is still here. All that's lost is a form. Everything that goes on on the earth plane is a form. So we put it in its proper perspective. We grieve the loss of the form and we go deeper. And we know that divine truth that nothing is lost in spirit. That's the truth. The absolute truth. Nothing is lost in spirit. So when things seem to, when your workshop burns down, say, oh good. You know, just burning down my mistakes. Because you've taken with you the things that weren't the mistakes, right? You're taking with you all that which is your wisdom. You're taking with you all that which is your love. You're taking with you all that which is your identity. And that's going to move you forward into doing what is next for you, into to pouring that life and that love that's who you are, your identity, into new forms. The daily word reading today is perfect from Eric Butterworth, and that does just happen to be the book we're using on Wednesday nights, right? Is that... What we create, what we receive, is who we think we are. That's what we expect. So the more that we know that we are expressions of God, the more that we are going to receive that good because we are clear that that's who we are, that's what we deserve, and that's the power that we have. I want to quickly just point out to you another, you got an insert in your bulletin today. And this is, uh, I'm going to just quickly note it for you and then invite you to take this home and use it if you choose to. It's called The Creative Process of Manifestation. And uh, I adapted this from Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, his book, Prosperity. And in, uh, I love the front of there. And uh, it's, he's, uh, this is affirmation. I trust the universal law of prosperity in all my affairs. And if you would, let's affirm that together. I trust thy universal law of prosperity in all my affairs. And in this booklet, if you choose to use it, if you want to, in there is outlined uh, what feel more listed as the seven steps to manifestation or the seven steps to open that channel. So if you've decided that you're willing to forgive and let the flow of life come, then you're ready to put these into use. And this is his adaptation of the seven steps of creation from Genesis. And he is very clear. You can look at these seven steps, and it's basically about how one, you know, again, there are lots of ways, lots of methods, but this is one way, one very uh, easy to use and concrete and spiritually grounded way that you can bring forth that good of God in your life. So this is not about materiality. It's not about consumerism. It's about grounding yourself in spirit and allowing spirit to move through you to manifest what it is that your heart's and soul's mission who it is that you are, good in whatever form it is that you're needing it. This is a wonderful little exercise in bringing forth from the formless spirit mode into form and creating new forms from that goodness that you are now ready to express. So I invite you to take that home and study it and use it, put it into use. And I want to close with this. This is a, a wonderful quotation, and it is from W.H. Uh, Murray who was a, a mountaineer, a Scottishman. I'm a Scotsman. So he was a Scotsman. And um, he wrote this. He says, until one is committed, there's hesitancy, the chance to draw back. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there's one elementary truth that ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. And that is that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. So all sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events, issues from the decision, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no one could have dreamed 
would have come their way. And he goes on and he says, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Begin your experience, your adventure in forgiveness, and your adventure in bringing forth that good because you deserve it. Let's pray. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you for goodness. Thank you for life. And thank you for making us humans who we are, creative beings. Guide and support every one of us here today, God, in bringing forth that good that is our innate inheritance. And so it is, and we affirm this in the name and through the nature of our brother, our way shore, Jesus the Christ, and the Christ that shines in us. Amen.